Hi, in this video I will talk about uh, picture quality and uh, all the technologies we use in TCL uh, TV sets uh, in uh, 2022 product range. So, what are the fillers of premium TV picture performance? According to us, there are five major fillers uh, which uh, make uh, the TV outstanding and really premium in this segment. First of all, it's uh, clarity and uh, ability to deliver smooth and uh, looking like in a normal world uh, picture quality. Oh, here we use deep learning AI upscaling. Then contrast, if we want to replicate the real life picture, so we need also a very wide uh, dynamic range uh, and uh, here uh, mini LED helps us a lot. Then quantum dot uh, technology, which is uh, called QLED, uh, to deliver colors and then also to be able to reproduce colors you see in the real life. Motion, as uh, you sit closer to the screen and then you need more motion phases, so to deliver 120 or even 144 motion phases. And then to absorb uh, reflections uh, from all the lights you have uh, at uh, home, from windows or from ceiling lights. Then uh, let's look a bit uh, more into the clarity. So clarity is made of four major areas. In the first step, it is deep learning artificial intelligence with super resolution. So here we are able to rebuild the picture using chunks of real world textures. Then the next point is content classification. Here we recognize type of the content we get to TV and uh, according uh, to the content, we can uh, just choose proper settings for sharpness and also for saturation of colors and contrast. Then the contour, which is uh, very important in uh, today content, which is extremely compressed. And then you don't see any steps on the picture, but just smooth gradation. And then foreground, background separation that faces are always faces and background is well saturated. You raise a lot of questions, what is AIPQ uh, to zero? And here we bring back this uh, slide to tell you that on the one side that this is uh, for any content, whatever content comes, uh, we are able to uh, assess this content and uh, then bring it to the best uh, quality on the screen. So quality restoration with cleaning and removing our artifacts, then upscaling and keeping the sharpness as in the real world, then uh, managing dynamic range as some content from TV can be very compressed and uh, without uh, dynamic range you perceive in the real world. Then color reproduction just to have skin always looking like the skin and the motion uh, to be perfect uh, and very gradual. Uh, clear, another area which is important here is evolution of upscaling. So uh, upscaling uh, on the one side is uh, started uh, when UHD just pop up because most of the content was either SD or 1080i. So first step was just upscaling and everyone was saying the picture is not sharp. Then super resolution came and was able to uh, increase the sharpness in some specific areas. We had perception of the sharper picture, but still it was not ideal because it was uh, the same applied to any picture. Then machine learning came, which was able to recognize type of the content and adapt sharpness. Uh, and uh, But still it was not the ideal solution. So then deep learning uh, was, as I said in before, to rebuild uh, the picture uh, with the chunks of real world textures. So we talk about clarity, let's look about on contrast. Contrast is just dynamic range you perceived and contrast is made of several key areas. On the one side is uh, peak brightness, so the one which is able to deliver dynamic range, so very uh, deep uh, blacks and very bright uh, white areas. But this is only possible when we uh, use uh, a huge number of dimming zones, hundreds of thousands of zones. And then we can drive it correctly. We have to drive it. So we have to calculate uh, information about the backlight using uh, 16 bits, so 65,000 of levels, and then drive in 12 bits. And of course, uh, 
it won't help us a lot if we don't use the panel, which is VI, a uh, panel with uh, latest generation 7000 to 1 static uh, contrast. There are a lot of questions how many zones we need uh, to make the picture looking uh, awesome. Yes, so then uh, let's first look uh, on the human eye. Human eye is able to recognize only 144 zones and 65 degrees. So imagine you sit 3 meters from 98 inch uh, and then the screen is huge but still you use only 40 degrees so you can perceive less uh, zones. So why 144 is not enough? Because uh, then uh, your eye is able to see limited contrast in one zone but uh, wider you see more contrast you see. So that's why we need more zones. And uh, then we have to also drive it correctly because if we don't drive it correctly you will see huge uh, uh, halo or blooming, which we have to suppress. So, how we compare this uh, QLED technology with uh, mini LED uh, different uh, uh, versions? So, the one with hundreds and thousands of zones you see here. So, in, con in QLED we have global dimming, so we are able to adapt the backlight uh, only globally for whole screen and then for mini LED we have blue backlight made of uh, thousands or uh, more many thousands of uh, LEDs and then we have uh, quantum dot uh, film which is uh, making the color. Then we still come to the point uh, how many zones and what are the differences between technologies. So let's look on uh, the same peak brightness levels for global dimming product. You see that this product goes up to 300 something nits. And only for dark picture we dim it uh, just to help you perceive uh, the better contrast. Uh, then with 300 zones uh, we reach uh, 1200 peak brightness uh, for movie mode and more even for uh, dynamic mode. Uh, and uh, then for 2000 zones we can go come closer to dark areas. So you see that in APL20, so when we cover only 20% of the screen, uh, we have very huge dynamic range and peak brightness of 2000 nits. And at the same time you compare it with OLED, which is able to do only 700-800 nits for 2% coverage, but if you have 20% coverage, it is going down to 300 uh, something uh, nits, and then brighter picture you see the average brightness of OLED is below 200 nits. So visually to show you with number of zones uh, and then you see no zones, uh, we don't see details in bright areas, uh, more zones we have more details because we can adapt the picture uh, properly and then to have details and very huge dynamic range. Clarity, contrast, uh, color. So amount of uh, color information or color volume TVs get today uh, is uh, very different. So what broadcast gives to TVs is very limited uh, the information about uh, dynamic range and also color coverage. But what streaming gives in Dolby Vision uh, is uh, absolutely huge. To be able to display properly what streaming provides, uh, we, that's why we develop mini LED technology. And you see that it is generally very close to what Netflix is uh, sending. Uh, then the QLED is still a very good solution, covers uh, colors uh, well with slightly lower dynamic range. And uh, then uh, another point uh, which many of you ask is a blue light filter, so the same feature you have in your mobile phone. You can also use it in uh, the TV set if you watch in the evening and then to shift uh, uh, color uh, temperature to be more uh, warm. We have uh, four major technologies to display colors in TVs, starting from basic TVs as RGB, so this is standard color gamut. Uh, then white color gamut with KSF filter, you see broader coverage of REC 2020, then QLED. Uh, here we use uh, similar technology to dual LED because we have uh, uh, quantum dot and also we have uh, together with white color gamut, this helps us to deliver more energy efficient product and then mini LED where we have blue LEDs and then quantum dot enhancement uh, film. We talk about uh, color, let's uh, look on motion. So motion is more and more complex in TVs. You see that there are many motion formats which are coming to TVs. Uh, can be over HDMI when you play, VRR can be 
over HDMI from DVB sources, from OTT sources, and uh, also from uh, all other sources. So in uh, VRR case, we just send everything directly to the panel. And then in all other cases, we use the rather the blur and also frame interpolation to have to display between 100 to 120 frames on the screen. Why motion is so important, uh, you see here. Uh, first of all, many of you want to have cinematic motion, so that's why we provide 24 Hz capabilities. So what uh, Netflix sent you, we display exactly on the screen. Then, uh, if you want to have smoother motion, because you feel that it is annoying, uh, so then you can uh, use uh, the judder and you can use also motion interpolation. Uh, so the judder is uh, correcting uh, timing, so if you, we have 24 frames inside 60 Hz uh, format, so with the judder motion will be very smooth without jumps. And motion interpolation, when camera is panning or everything is moving fast, there are more motion phases. The last point is the blur, which is mainly the case of camera 180 degrees uh, shutter blur. Uh, so, which is cinematic blur, some of you wants to have picture sharper. Recently we got the question, so why, why, why 100, 120 Hz help us to explain and answer this question? First of all, human eye. You see that human eye perceives text, uh, shapes, colors uh, in uh, different uh, uh, angles and then motion is somewhere in between. So closer you sit, more motion phases you need. Especially when you look on, as I said, 98 inch, uh, you sit 3 meters and if you use it in 24 hertz in a very, with very dynamic range uh, picture, so you will see extremely annoying and headache pictures. So that's why this product is the best example. Then the peak brightness is also making the difference because uh, uh, it is uh, causing another annoying effect if you have 24 frames. And then the last point is content production. So mostly today OTT content is produced in 24p. You sit very close, so then you want to have you want to have motion very smooth. TV is 25p, and the same you sit very close on very large screen. Uh, then you want to have it smooth. That's why 100 or 120 hertz. Screen is another point uh, which is important for picture performance. Wide viewing angle, we improve it every year, so then you move off the screen center and then you still see saturated colors and uh, contrast and no brightness loss. Anti-reflection, you don't see all the reflections coming uh, from lights uh, uh, in your living room or uh, from windows. Uniformity is uh, also very important that uh, brightness in the middle of the screen is not far different from the brightness which is uh, on the sides. And last point, but I think uh, for most of you very difficult to understand, is VA panel, which is making the difference because IPS panel used by many companies is 1000 or even 800 to 1 contrast, which is no black gray, and 7000 to 1 is much more than I can perceive. Great performance, great capabilities, uh, very uh, wide dynamic range, uh, color volume, so we need formats uh, which are able to use this kind of TV sets. And these formats are pushing, in fact, development of uh, picture performance technologies. HDR, uh, HDR10 uh, was uh, the first one, then uh, Dolby Vision came. Our world products uh, support almost all HDR technologies which are on the market and I can say 100% of uh, used uh, by streaming uh, services. So what's the difference between all of them? Let's look on HDR signal which is which has very uh, wide dynamic range. So if we use standard screen like this one for presentation you see that we lose details uh, in darks and in brights. When we try to just display it as it should be displayed, so then only using brightness levels. So you see there is no sun and still there are no details in darks. Then we can have HDR10 which will compress, so it means map using our engineering language, the brightness to capabilities of the screen. Or we can use Dolby Vision which will map uh, the brightness, but also ensure that colors are properly saturated because colorists saw it, how it would look on the high-end TV set and low-end uh, TV set. So all this is inside Dolby Vision. But uh, 
Many content uh, today comes to our TVs uh, as HDR and is not available in the dynamic uh, metadata format. So we can uh, use uh, uh, static mapping, but the static mapping makes the picture uh, looks uh, awful. So then we can, why we cannot uh, uh, have proper static mapping? As you see, the, the curve to map is different for bright picture, dark picture, and this curve have to be calculated. So that's why we have dynamic tone mapping, which is doing this calculation on the fly. Dolby Vision is a key mode to deliver uh, best HDR performance. Dolby Vision today can work in Dolby Vision Dark, which is certification mode, what is seen in the studio when film is produced. Dolby Vision Bright uh, for bright room, but then uh, in many cases your room is not very dark, not very bright, so that's why we have Dolby Vision IQ, which is sensing the light. And then we have also Dolby Vision for gaming. Uh, which is done on the game console side and TV set is able to display it very fast. Dolby Vision IQ is made of two major things. Content intelligence where content is recognized, so the motion, so it's 120 Hz uh, frame interpolation, so the snow which is very cool bright. And light sensing, uh, in this case you see how uh, it is adapting, so bright room, uh, the screen is brighter, dark room, the screen is uh, darker. TVs are made of uh, a lot of uh, different settings, uh, so we call it objective uh, content uh, settings. So for us this uh, mode which is objective is movie mode for HDR, then is Dolby Vision Dark, Dolby Vision IQ for Dolby Vision content. There is also IMAX mode, uh, so IMAX uh, recognize uh, the content which is coming. IMAX content can be only in HDR10, in HDR10+. You might see IMAX logo also in Disney Plus and with Dolby Vision, but it is IMAX extended. It means that it is always 16 by 9. And then we come to the point why no filmmakers mode in TCL. Uh, so this no, because uh, when you look on this very bright dynamic range content and you force it to 24 frames, you will see that it uh, won't be uh, very uh, smooth and it will be rather painful. There are many types of signals coming today to TVs, but in reality we have the worst, which is SDR 8-bit used today by broadcasting, and the best, which is the Dolby Vision, uh, used by uh, the VODs. And content more or less in between is a quite rare case, like SDR 10-bit almost not available, HLG uh, somehow available for broadcasting. Then, how we compare our products uh, to the competitors you see here. I think uh, this is the data comes from the latest uh, tests which are published uh, by uh, many test magazines. You see that in terms of average brightness, it is comparable. In terms of peak brightness, uh, TCL is uh, uh, leading. Uh, then, in terms of dynamic range, uh, TCL is absolutely unbeatable because we use mini LED together with uh, VA uh, panels. And in terms of performance and then the processing, you see these are uh, similar chipsets which are used. So, the major difference between TCL and two other products is VA panel on TCL side, IPS low quality panel on other side.